Um, so at the old University of Louvain, the practice of uh, dictating lessons, leading to the production of an important amount of handwritten notebooks, gave rise to the incorporation of visual materials in these volumes. The text was often accompanied by title pages, ink drawings, and engraved plates. This tradition of illustrating lecture notes was already established in the 15th century, uh, flourished in the first half of the 17th century, and continued until the mid 18th century. Illustrated dictata are situated at the crossroads between uh, multiple uh, scopes of investigation, emblematic literature, printed production, visualization of uh, science, history of education. Several uh, publications address this uh, question, in particular, of course, the collective volume Ex Cathedra, published in 2012, and the book uh, The Art of Philosophy, published by uh, Susanna Berger in 2017. And I show you here uh, a selection of other studies on uh, illustrated, illustrated uh, uh, dictata from uh, Louvain. Uh, during the heuristic phase of my uh, research on this corpus, I listed uh, the manuscripts uh, from Louvain, which contain illustrations, in order to uh, determine and categorize the type of images used. I indicate here uh, the number of illustrated dictata by institution, so mainly, uh, as was uh, already said, the Royal Library in Brussels, uh, the archives from the KU Leuven and the UC Louvain, uh, and also uh, the um, archives in uh, Liège at the ULG and in Ghent. Uh, and here I would like to, to thank the Magister Dixit team for, uh, for the valuable tool uh, that is the online database uh, of this uh, project. And it is uh, very helpful for uh, research, especially in COVID times. Images uh, inserted in student notebooks could be divided into three main categories. Uh, first, a scientific imagery uh, directly aiming at fostering uh, understanding of the subject matter. Second, a figurative iconography uh, pertaining to allegory, emblematics, and symbolism. And third, an iconography unrelated to the content of the course. Uh, the distinct but sometimes uh, complementary uh, modalities of the image were put at the service of knowledge acquisition and transmission, as I will uh, attempt to demonstrate. This corpus furnishes the possibility to study engraved images from the perspective of reception. Students were responsible for the material preparation of their manuscripts, and they could choose uh, which uh, uh, images to insert where and how to arrange them, and with which text or other uh, images to combine them. Bricolage, reuse, recycling, appropriation of images, and adaptation according to the academic content represent some of the many modes of creation of these uh, visual materials, which fulfill uh, aesthetic and epi epistemological, mnemonic, and sometimes also sociopolitical uh, intentions. My paper focuses on the symbolic language applied to lecture notebooks, a symbolic language whose uh, usage was encouraged by the Jesuits in similar academic practices, such as Avicciones and Thesis Springs. It also addresses the materiality of prints and their manipulation by students who were at the same time uh, producers and readers of their own manuscripts. Louvain printers and booksellers played an important role in the selection of engravings inserted in college notebooks. Michael Ayer, Lambert Blendef, Petrus Denicoué, and Charles-Henri Becker produced and sold printed images. These were recuperated from earlier publications, not specifically created for the course matter uh, taught in the faculty. Uh, most were reprints from existing and sometimes uh, well-known plates or copies after older compositions and marketed to student customers. Series of engravings were particularly favored by students as they induced a sense of continuity through the chapters and subchapters of a single volume. 
placed under or facing titles. They lent rhythm to reading, marking out the volume's different uh, components and visually structuring the manuscripts or introducing uh, popular topics, humor or academic content. In a treatise on the elements uh, from a notebook of uh, Enrique Sionez van Kendelbeek, two humoristic series of prints are brought into dialogue to illustrate each of the four elements. Under the heading Aqua, the student uh, placed an engraving by Crispin de Pass of a doctor examining a urinal opposite an etching by Jacques Callot depicting a fireworks uh, display on the Arno River. This was taken from uh, the series Capricci di Varie Figure. The other elements are accompanied by similar uh, juxtapositions of uh, engravings from a different uh, series. Uh, in a physics manuscript of Van Kentelbeek, two series of prints by the same artist are parallel, paralleled uh, to illustrate Visus and Auditus. Likewise, in the notebook of Martinus Verdonck, engravings of the census with uh, Dutch captions face corresponding handwritten uh, Latin titles, accompanied by cut ornamental engravings. Angels with cartouches, putty surrounding a pedestal, an eagle holding a banner, etc. On a folio, an angel's outline is surrounded by fine paint strokes and the drawing of a shield containing the title of the section, De Auditu, has been added under his hand. Collectible and marketable printed suites of allegorical images were produced in large numbers in this period, broadcasting and fostering interest in new ideas and discoveries uh, based on observation and hands-on experience. In the domain of allegory, personifications were a recurring device in serial prints, often accompanied by captions and titles. Taken up, uh, taken up by the students and adapted to course uh, subject matter, the addition of uh, self-evident allegories to the philosophical content and its uh, juxtaposition with other prints presenting a, a different mode of uh, pictorial depiction, uh, such as descriptive or uh, satirical, fulfilled a mnemonic role. Printed series were also borrowed from emblematic literature. The most widespread sets of emblematic devices uh, reused in Louvain Dictata are the plates originally uh, conceived for Lux and Evangelica, published from uh, 1648, and Firmamentum uh, Symbolicum, published in uh, 1652, by Jesuit fathers Hendrik Engelgrave and Sebastianus Amatredei, uh, respectively. Each of the Latin sermons collected in Lux Evangelica is preceded by an emblem composed uh, of one or two moti, an image, and a short text summarizing the sermon structures. The copper plates were sold to Michael Aye, who sold off prints on uh, loose leaflets to, uh, to university students. Firmamentum Symbolicum uh, presents 50 laudative essays uh, of the, on the uh, Virgin Mary combined with emblems. In total, 87 compositions from Lux Evangelica and 38 uh, images from Firmamentum Symbolicum were inserted in Louvain notebooks. Uh, from the 1670s, the engravings were published in a second state, including the title of a course chapter or section. This recuperation process of the copper plates by Michael Aye was already studied by uh, Mark Van Park in several articles. An instructive uh, case study in the role of emblematics in the academic milieu involves mapping the tra traje trajectory of a single motif, such as that of most, uh, uh, sorry, this is not the, the right, Oh, sorry, it, there it is. Um, so, uh, such as uh, the, the motif of most flying around uh, the flame of a candle. 
Gilles Corrozès Hecatomographie, an emblem book from uh, 1540, combine the most composition with the title War is Sweet to those who have uh, never experienced it. It inflects uh, Erasmus essay on the adage Dulce Bellum in Expertise, meditating on the subject of war. This theme appears in a collection of Afficciones from the Jesuit College of Brussels, uh, dated 1633. Afficciones were annual emblematic exhibitions produced by uh, Jesuit Popes, uh, preserved in the form of commemorative manuscripts made by professional artists. A folio display displays uh, the visual device of the candle with the title uh, Qui amat periculum peribit in illo. So whoever dallies with danger will perish in it. A quote from uh, Ecclesiasticus. This affixio refers to the um, political, political circumstance of the time. In the 1630s, the Spanish Netherlands particularly suffered from the conflict uh, with the Dutch uh, Republic. The motif uh, of the most also illustrated uh, amatory suffering. In Otto van Veen's uh, Emblemata from uh, 1618, an emblem features uh, the mot, the most, and the title Brevis et Damnosa Voluptas. Uh, how short this pleasure is and how dangerous it is. In Lux Evangelica, the motif is accompanied by a text warning against sin. Uh, so I quote, uh, the occasion to sin has to be greatly avoided in order that we do not run toward immediate, immediate danger, like it is customary for mages that are flying around a lamp. When it is uh, adapted from Lux Evangelica and reused by, by students for uh, illustrating their manuscripts in physics, however, this motif was uh, divested from these moralizing overtones. The engraving inserted in the physics notebook of Norbert Joseph Ligier is removed from its uh, emblematic apparatus and accompanied by the caption, the caption uh, Desfera Activitatis, that is the extent to which a body can act around itself. The example given is that of fire that cannot uh, heat up distant objects when they are out of the sphere of activity. In this context, the most to the flame motif was transformed uh, into a, a visual mnemonic that resonated within, uh, with a, a didactic message about proximity uh, relative to affect. Uh, no, I have to go back, I'm sorry, for this. So I have to go back um, uh, to this uh, second example. So another case uh, testifying to shifts uh, from moral or religious significance toward, towards uh, one befitting the philosophical subject is that of the motif of the sundial. In a notebook written in 1671 uh, by a student of logic, uh, Nicolas de Remont, a sundial is placed between the day and the night to illustrate uh, contra contradictory uh, propositions with the title uh, De Contradictoris. In emblem uh, 42 of Engelgrave's Lux Evangelica, the image of the gnomon uh, situated between light and darkness is associated with a quotation from Matthew. So I quote, no, uh, no one can serve two masters, either you will hate the one and love the other or you will devote it to the one and despise the other." End of quote. It insists thus on the fact that one must be uh, devoted to the one and only God. The religious uh, connotation has uh, disappeared in the student notebook, but the emblem still denotes the idea of contradiction. However, the meaning of this emblem changes when the pictura is used by the same student for his notes in uh, physics. In this case, the Latin caption refers to astronomy, de ortu et occasu astrorum, so on the origin and decline of stars. In a letter of manuscripts in uh, Physica, the student, Johannes van Alderweireld, cut and pasted the engraving on a page and added a pen drawing with the caption, Horologium Horizontale. And you can see it's uh, written in that. Uh, that direction. The image is thus a, a direct illustration of the scientific content at hand, a sundial, which is the title of the subject, subchapter, uh, De Orologiis Solaribus. You can read uh, here. 
Following the same ID, the representation is inserted in yet another manuscript of physics, opening a chapter uh, on the division of time. There, the engraving uh, bears the caption uh, in logic, uh, added by the printer, the contradictories, uh, but the student, Norbert Ligier, uh, adapted the text to the appropriate subject by handwriting, uh, you can see here, uh, de anno die et mense uh, over the, the, the printed uh, letters. Um, and it cor corresponds to the title uh, handwritten uh, in the, the facing page uh, here. Uh, the illustration inspired a pen drawing made by another student, Enricus van Kentelbeek, to conclude the question on double propositions in logic. It depicts a solar table provided with the text effluits ora diesque, hours and days pass by. This meaning conferred to the solar table as a sign of time passing is rather common and can be found, uh, for instance, in an engraving made for uh, Ug Herman Hugo's uh, Pia Desideria, a very popular uh, religious emblem book uh, in the 17th century. Uh, so here, uh, emblem 13 quotes a job, are not my few days almost over, turn away from me so I can have a moment's joy, end of quote. And uh, the human soul held by a secret love uh, pounds at a sundial while uh, wiping uh, tears away. Thus, we can see that uh, the same image added to a uh, university dictata can be vested with three different meanings according to the subject uh, matter concerned. The gnomon casting a shadow uh, on a plate can convey the idea of contradiction when used in logic. While it is a measuring instrument uh, when used in astronomy, and it expresses time flying when placed at the end of a chapter, uh, visually closing it. These examples testify to the communicative strengths of uh, the symbolic, symbolic language of images in student notebooks that constituted a form of applied uh, emblematics marshaled in the service of university education. The varied uses of the emblem outlined here uh, are consistent with the emblem as an ornament whose main characteristic is its uh, plasticity and removability even before uh, its rise as a literary genre. Perhaps more surprising, however, is the use of an old visual mode of representation to depict the new sciences based on a visual account of reality. Symbolism, however, often inhabits scientific imagery produced in the certain Netherlands. To a large extent, this can be explained by the influence Jesuits uh, exerted in the visual culture of knowledge uh, in these uh, regions. The Society of Jesus set up a pedagogy in their schools that exploited uh, the creativity and enthusiasm of the youth uh, to inculcate in them values and convictions, formulated through a playful and pleasant, but also extremely uh, powerful and effective mode of expression uh, such as emblematics. The order uh, promoted emblematic practice as an exercise in rhetoric and mnemonics, as education was more effective when uh, interesting and amusing. More generally, the Jesuits uh, made a wide use of emblematics as a vehicle of knowledge. The use of emblematic devices adapted to a university context uh, shows both the circulation of such uh, printed material and attending shifts uh, in meaning. In the examples uh, cited above, students' creativity was limited by the choice of uh, prints offered for sale by, by the booksellers. More exceptionally, students could also choose uh, to cut engravings from uh, personal printed books to ornament their le lecture notes, uh, affording them more inventiveness in arranging their manuscripts. This is the case of the notebook in physics of uh, Norbert Ligier, who reused uh, engravings in medallions cut from uh, two printed sources. Oh, no, that was, uh, 
Uh, the first records the visit of the newly appointed governor of the Southern Netherlands uh, to the Brussels Jesuit College in uh, 1642. The five engravings taken from uh, distribute to the governor were pasted on the pages of the manuscripts and accompanied by uh, captions related to uh, the chapter titles. The second uh, publication sourced for images for uh, Ligier's physics uh, notebook produced by the Louvain Jesuit College contains uh, the funeral uh, oration for Ferdinand III of Austria, uh, who died in 1657. Uh, and it was followed by verses and laudatory emblems by Frédéric Bouta de Younger. Pen engravings are pasted on the pages of Ligier's uh, manuscript with a title uh, written in pen under each image, such, th uh, such that uh, the viewer can lift each uh, printed uh, medallion and discover its verso and uh, the manuscript folio uh, underneath. The engravings are excised from their original uh, encomiastic context of the Laudatio and illustrate chapters on the sphere, on, mov on movement, or on a sensitive soul. Some of these uh, vignettes are glued, glued, glued sorry, uh, one against the other. Uh, for instance, uh, here a folio uh, contains uh, three engraving, uh, engravings pasted one on top of the other above the caption uh, Desonis in had handwriting. So you can see here a first uh, composition depicting the sun with zodiacal circle. This can be li lifted. You can see the verso here. Uh, and it reveals a second uh, illustrated cartouche, the sun presented uh, by a puto in a landscape. Um, and uh, the eagles and crowns surrounding the image are partially uh, cut to match uh, the, so here, uh, they are partially cut to match the, the shape of the first uh, cartouche. On the verso of this uh, second image uh, is pasted a third engraving, uh, the same as the first uh, composition with the zodiacal uh, circle. So this complex uh, layout bears witness uh, to the students' handiwork to train their minds. It can be compared to the fugitive prints process, an innovative assemblage of printed cutouts and paper flaps uh, that changed the two-dimensional image to an animated one. It first appeared, appeared in Germany around uh, 1538, and it was widely uh, copied uh, throughout Europe including in uh, student notebooks. It is, for instance, uh, the case of Cor Humanum, so Human Hearts, uh, edited by Michael Aye in the same uh, manuscript uh, of uh, Ligier. Uh, this engraving copied uh, from a Cartesian textbook uh, was frequently uh, used in Louvain notebooks. I show you here a short uh, video. Um, so you can see that uh, the flaps can be uh, lifted to let appear uh, the internal uh, working of the heart. By superimposing engravings that could be manipulated uh, to make other uh, visual devices visible, the same effect of surprise and discovery was sought uh, in uh, Ligier's manuscripts uh, with the emblem uh, devices. Interpolations of uh, images in lecture notebooks fulfilled a manifold ornamental, ludic, and didactic functions. Ordering and manipulating man uh, prints gave students a creative free reign. They could color and paint prints, draw after engravings, create dynamic layouts, or personalize existing compositions, stimulating the imagination and providing a fertile ground for memorization of philosophical content. These practices of inserting or trimming and pasting uh, prints, putting them uh, in dialogue with both text and other images, were common in 15th and 16th century manuscripts. The religious devotional functions of the print, uh, the print medium gave rise to a tactile uh, inter interplay between early prints and their collectors, who often altered their print formats or coloring and grouped them within albums, manuscripts, 
or print books to suit uh, their own pious uh, mnemonic proposals. The proliferation of interactive prints and uh, illustrated single sheets in the 16th and 17th centuries appealed to an active personal, tactile, and autodidactic um, viewership. It also played a, a role in knowledge communication processes as handling images and their uh, dynamic interaction in a pedagogical context concretizes um, a course subject into a more um, a comprehensive, a comprehensible uh, form. By manipulating images when compiling their uh, manuscripts, Louvain students could play uh, with the multiple meanings conveyed by uh, visual materials and experiment with new possibilities. The printed images plasticity enabled their adaptation to accommodate uh, sorry, uh, different users with the addition of new titles or details drawn in pen, application of color association with other visual materials. Uh, Gwendolyn, sorry for interrupting, but in if ah, okay, that's the conclusion slide. It's the conclusion, yes, yeah. I'm <laughs> Uh, so the documents uh, analyzed here demonstrate the extent to which uh, student life constituted an important source for the creation of uh, images. They were designed along the lines of the combinatorial arts developed in early modern European visual culture by reusing, reusing uh, existing forms or by adapting uh, visual patterns and conventional iconography. Illustrated college dictata produced at the university were steeped in a Jesuit visual culture that perpetuated in higher education. They testify to the creativity of the students who integrated visual representations in their volumes for aesthetic, didactic, and mnemonic purposes and contribute to a nuancing of the notional epistemic, epistemic image increasingly evoked, invoked in early modern studies. The concept can be uh, capacious, so I quote um, uh, Christoph Rutti and Alexis Smith. Uh, so any image uh, that was made with the intention of expressing, demonstrating, or illustrating a theory, end of quote, or more restrictive, uh, I quote here uh, Lorraine Daston, an image made with the intent not only of depicting the object of scientific inquiry, but also of replacing it. A working object of science uh, standing for the too plentiful and too various objects of nature, end of quote. Uh, while the engravings added in the Louvain College notebooks do not correspond or not exactly correspond to the latter more narrow definition, uh, they nonetheless transmitted uh, philosophical knowledge through ancient uh, allegorical and emblematic modes of uh, representation and through uh, handiwork experience. Thank you. Thank you, Gwendolyn, for that uh, rich uh, talk and also for that very beautifully illustrated uh, PowerPoint slide. Um, it's 11 o'clock, so we will have uh, one, two quick questions. And for those who are interested, they can join a dedicated um, a breakout room with further questions for both our speakers. So if anyone has a quick question or quick remark at this moment, please feel free to join the discussion. No, I don't see any at the moment, but I have a question myself. Uh, I, I have very limited knowledge of uh, such images, especially uh, 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 17th century uh, onwards. But I, I think the main reason uh, why we still have these books is of course, because of the aesthetic value. Um, but I, I was wondering, is it something that, that every student had to do, uh, uh, acquire these, um, uh, the, these images or drawings? Or do you think it's something that was mainly for the richer students who had the means to do so? Uh, there is a, certainly an economic uh, uh, aspect uh, because they, they, they had to, to, uh, to buy these engravings or to buy uh, uh, books in, in which they are uh, recuperated uh, engravings. Uh, so there, there is uh, certainly uh, an, uh, an aspect. And I found uh, several uh, manuscripts with more than 100 engravings inserted uh, in, in, 
in between or, or on the pages uh, and certainly it, 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 it costs money so so uh, that, that is one aspect mm -hmm. uh, but we can also uh, find um, numerous pen drawings that I didn't uh, talk about it uh, in manuscripts and uh, often copied after engravings uh, mm -hmm. so either it was an also an economical uh, uh, there was an, an economical uh, explanation, or it was also an, uh, a, a way, a manner to uh, um, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to learn the, the content by, by copying the the, uh, the the instruments or the the, the anatomical plates. Um, but I, I think the the something I, I wanted to, to show is the, the, the creativity, the imagination, and the, the, the freedom left to, to students. Uh, they, they could choose which images and how many uh, images to, to insert. Um, so that there was no obligation at all. Um, okay, oh, that's, that's yeah. interesting. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, I see that there are two questions by Daniel and Ray. But I, uh, Mattia was the first to raise his hand uh, in real life, uh, I guess. Uh, so he gets to go first. Sorry, uh, guys. <laughs> many, many thanks for the wonderful talk. Just a question, since you were considering both personifications and Cartesian images, uh, have you noticed whether there is something like a trend between the two? And I mean, it seems like in Descartes' philosophy, personification shouldn't be allowed for many complex reasons that will not enter here. But I was wondering whether in Cartesian notes, where you find Cartesian images, you find not so many personification, or you can find in general any trend between the different genres and these usual uh, devices you were speaking about. Uh, so th there are trends uh, in, in the places uh, of the manuscript and personifications were often placed at the beginning of the, the manuscript or at the beginning of a chapter. Uh, and maybe it was also a, a mnemonic uh, device to place the, the same type of, uh, of uh, visual uh, language uh, at uh, the, the beginning of a chapter or the beginning of a, a section or subsection. So maybe the, the, the type of, of, uh, of visual language uh, was also uh, important uh, in structuring, uh, in visually structuring the, the manuscripts. Um, but but we, we can find uh, manuscripts where, where there are uh, emblematics, uh, personifications, anatomical plates, and uh, so, so yeah, it's there is a mix of, of different uh, languages, and it's hard to tell why why they, 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 the the student cho chose to tell that. And, and another thing I, I wanted to to highlight is the the. Um, the role of the, the printers and booksellers uh, in Louvain, and the fact that the professor, uh, maybe they were encouraging this, this practice, but they were not the ones uh, who said to the students, you have to, to buy this image and to insert uh, this image at, at this point of the manuscripts. So this is uh, hard, hard to tell. Uh, what was the, 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 the relationship and the communication between the, the, the faculty, the, the authorities, and, uh, and the, the booksellers? And the students. So I, I think it was more a personal uh, personal choice. I hope I answered your uh, question. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Daniel. Uh, uh, please feel free. Yes. Thanks uh, for the fascinating talk. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, the emblematic illustrations that you showed us—they remind me a lot of those that are used in. Uh, Alba Amicorum, also Books of Friends, and mm -hmm. I was just wondering if, if you've seen any connection between those two genres, student notes and the uh, Alba Amicorum. Uh, I still have to, to, uh, to lean into that, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a very inter interesting uh, comparison. Uh, maybe one, one difference is that the Alba Amicorum uh, were intended uh, for um, for other people, they, they were intended to be seen by, by other people and to be uh, compiled uh, by, by friends, by re relatives, by, by other professors or, or so. So there was a, a collaborative uh, aspect in uh, compiling uh, the Alba Amica Room, uh, while the, the student notes are very uh, personal. So, so that, that might be a, a difference. But, but otherwise, uh, the, there is a, a certainly a comparison to be done uh, between the two uh, corpuses. Okay, uh, one final question 
before we can all refuel with coffee. Uh, Ray? Um, thank you so much. It's such a rich material. Uh, I wanted to ask um, not so much about the engravings, but more about the cases in which you, so you showed manuscripts, uh, drawings, and paintings. And maybe a broader question about do you know how were the people who formed, the students that formed these notebooks trained in handwriting? And I'm asking this because at least in England, there is a pretty clear division that to be a good university man, you're not supposed to know how to do calligraphic uh, writing. Like, like calligraphy and the art of writing is something much more for uh, people that learn accounting and much more in the world and less like in the, the, the higher realms of the mind. So I wonder if in your case, this was different. So like the notebooks I know of school boys and university undergrads are in England are nothing as beautiful. They are really ugly, actually. So. Okay. Uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, I, I don't know, it's a good question. And maybe there is also, also a trend in, uh, uh, in time uh, because uh, uh, at first, as uh, Anne showed uh, the well, illustration as, as I could uh, find in, in, the, in the corpus, um, the illustrations were mainly in logic, for, uh, for example, with uh, um, arboreal uh, structures or, or uh, um, logical squares, I forgot the, the thing, the table of opposition. So they, they were di directly um, uh, aiming at, at, uh, uh, at fostering an understanding of the, the, the content. And uh, it was a trend that appeared more, I, I would say, in the, in the 17th century. Um, with, well, no, it, it was already the case in the 16th century with, uh, with uh, uh, little doodles and then it, 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 grow, it grows and, and it, it takes uh, so much uh, uh, place uh, in, in, the, in the manuscripts and, and within the, the notes. But I, I, I couldn't, uh, couldn't say more about, uh, about that. 